Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform, please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a 500-piece limited edition in steel and rose gold launched for the 2021 model year. This is the Cartier Santos Dumont XL, a timepiece that is absolutely gorgeous in 34 millimeters of width, 7.6 millimeters of thickness, and from lug to lug, 46.6 millimeters is the total distance across the wrist with a 19 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now the watch on my wrist is handsome and compact. Though this is the XL, you can see it's not extra large by any standard watch industry measure. It's quite compact, thin, relatively short across the wrist, and I would say sized roughly like a 37 millimeter round watch. Even if your wrist is as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference, you're going to be able to wear this watch well, and it easily slides underneath the cuff. Taking a look at the strap, you can see that it's a very closed, integrated look as the strap inserts deep into the lugs and there's no daylight visible between them. So you can see that the strap is bolstered to match the thickness of the lugs, which makes for a nice visual consonants. You can also appreciate that it is large rectangular scale alligator leather, semi-gloss in black with a folded edge, a monotone stitch, and on the bottom, calfskin. You'll appreciate that the watch includes a lovely little Cartier polished steel pin buckle. And on the bottom is a little bit of contrast with media blasting against the polish. You can also appreciate that it has a raised bridge. So when the strap is inside the buckle, it's more or less flush on your wrist. It doesn't stack up beneath. It inserts in and thus sits flush. So the strap and the buckle combined are no thicker than the buckle by itself. The case band is gorgeous with a lovely arcing set of tapered lugs. My favorite feature is the way the bevel wraps all the way around the lugs and then extends through the mid case, making for a nice contrast with the satin finished mid case. You can also see that the lug hoods are polished. We have a little beaded crown with a blue synthetic sapphire cabochon. It's quite gorgeous, both in profile and in color tone, playing nicely against the rose gold of the bezel and the matching dial. You can see that the hands at center are broadsword style in blue, and the watch has the famous little screws that fix the bezel of the Santos series. So the Santos, originally created in 1904 by Louis Cartier of Paris for his friend, French-Brazilian aviator Alberto Santos Dumont. Initially, he was operating a dirigible, not an airplane, so he needed both hands to operate the unwieldy airship. As a result, he required a watch that did not require him to reach into his pocket. On the wrist, the Santos by Cartier could be viewed while your hands were at work controlling an airship. As a result, it was not only one of the first wristwatches of any kind, but it was verifiably the first ever pilot's watch. Well, it's not much of a pilot's watch by modern standards, but the Cartier Santos line is large. We have the sportier Santos, which is larger, water-resistant, anti-magnetic. Then we have the more dress-oriented Santos Dumont, which is also more similar in style and size to the original of 1904. What we have here is a dial that is stamped guilloche with a lovely radial wave pattern emanating out from the center. There's a red railroad track outboard for reading the minutes. Then we have lovely metallic sunburst motif hour track with applied and polished metal pre Art Deco numerals. These are more like an Art Nouveau font, as you have to remember it was the first quarter of the 20th century when the original Santos model rose to prominence. What's different here, relative to many of the Santos Dumont models of the modern era, is that this one is mechanical. Manual wind, it uses what's called the MC430, which is really a Piaget 430P. Remember, Cartier and Piaget are both part of the Richemont group, so they have access to a lot of the same technology, including movements. So inside this watch is an ultra-thin, high horology, 430p manual wind with a 38 to 43 hour power reserve. The movement's only 2.1 millimeters thick and 20.25 millimeters in diameter, so it's extremely compact. It beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour, and it pivots on 18 joules. It is a little gem of a high horology movement developed by Piaget for ultra thin timepieces, and thus perfectly at home in this one. And the watch is 30 meters water resistant. On the reverse side, you could see the image of La Demoiselle a aircraft of 1908 that marked Santos Dumont's most famous 
fixed wing, heavier than air flying machine. So this watch, La Demoiselle, or The Lady, flew in 1908, just a few years after the Wright brothers. This was a much more practical and controllable, heavier than air craft. And it was famous for taking flight with Dumont at the controls. You can see the image of it on the reverse side. Different versions of the Santos Dumont hand wind actually include different aircraft that Dumont created over the years. We have La Demoiselle here. Reach out to T. Masso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of this Cartier Santos Dumont limited edition.